my topic today is uh, fluoroscopic anatomy of neural foramina in lumbar facets, sacroiliac joints, and sacrococcygeal joints. Uh, I'm Anindya Basu, a working institute of neurosciences, Kolkata. And right, so neural foramina, the anatomy of neural foramina. Uh, it is very. I'm not going into anatomical details. Which I, what I would like to emphasize in my uh, talk today is a few uh, radiological concepts which I find find very useful uh, during my clinical practice. So let us first first start with this uh, the Scotty dog view. <clears throat> this we we um, this is basically an oblique view of the lumbar spine which we all use for our injections. So let us see what this uh, what are the different parts of the body of the Scotty dog are. So th this you uh, this you can see uh, this, uh, this is a very good radiological Scotty dog view that you've got on the right side. Uh, the Scotty dog has been marked out. Uh, the eye of the Scotty dog is basically the uh, the pedicle, uh, the, the nose of the Scotty dog is basically the transverse process. The ear of the Scotty dog is a superior articular process. The foreleg of the Scotty dog is the inferior articular process. And then the, the, the hind leg and the tail forms the, uh, the hind leg is the, uh, the inferior articular process of the opposite side and the, uh, and the tail is the superior articular process of the opposite side. And you've got the spinous process somewhere in between the body as well as the um, lamina here, the parse is the neck. So this is this is what we want to see when we uh, uh, when we do a uh, nerve injections. Most of us, although some people use the AP view for for doing their um, uh, nerve root blocks and for transformal injections as well as uh, but I uh, like to use this Scotty dog view a lot. So let us uh, see how this is helpful. So. <clears throat> This is another slide where uh, the right L5 S1 foraminal axis has been uh, described. The CR angle, as you can see, uh, uh, the idea is to uh, to make the end plates parallel, to see the Scotty dog view, to see the uh, the eye of the Scotty dog, and the needle can be placed ac accordingly in uh, the six o'clock position if you are aiming for the subpedicular approach. And again, in the lateral view, uh, where you have to make the end plates very parallel to each other so that uh, you've got a proper lateral view to work with. And uh, these are the CT uh, collaboration, uh, corporations of the, of the same. Uh, so this is what you're aiming at most of us when we are doing, the, doing our transformal injections. So uh, first we have to obtain a level specific AP view. Then we have to oblique the CRM towards the desired exercise and until the particular process, uh, the year of the endoscopy is approximately two feet of the length of the disc and plate uh, uh, lines posterior to the anterolateral vertebral body margin. So this is kind of an ideal uh, angulation of the CRM uh, to provide a, to to uh, produce a uh, like a classical Scotty dog. So the classic uh, fluoroscopic target, the subpedicular target, is uh, about uh, at the six o'clock position of the pedicle, which is the eye of the Scotty dog. So if, if uh, so, we have to uh, angle our CRM in an in an optimum uh, degree so that uh, the so that the ear of the Scotty dog is at two fifths distance from the margin. This is something which I found useful. <clears throat> so, so another concept, another um, the theoretical concept is uh, the safety triangle. The safety triangle is basically uh, a triangle which you can see it is bounded by the nerve root, the exiting nerve root. The, the pedicle uh, as, and the lateral border of the uh, lateral border of the vertebral body. So this is the safety triangle. The safety triangle doesn't have any neural structures. So if you are aiming for uh, if you're aiming your needle to be in the safety triangle uh, for your uh, transformal injections, nerve root blocks, the patient won't feel the pinch while while you're putting in the needle. The patient won't wince with pain when you hit um, because you're not hitting the nerve root. And uh, but at the same time, this is the, the the injection that you put in is very effective. It it uh, it um, gives the same results if, even if you're hitting the nerve root. I mean, it gives the same results as, as as both the procedures. This is another thing. And uh, let us come uh, let us come to Cambin's triangle. So Cambin's triangle is basically a triangle which is bound by uh, the hypotenuse is formed by the exiting nerve root. The the base is formed by the superior border of the inferior. Uh, uh, vertebral body, and uh, the uh, and this part, the other arm is formed by the traversing nerve root, all the all the fecal sac. So this is Cambin's triangle, as you can see, is bounded by two neural structures. The medially is the uh, traversing nerve root, the laterally is the exiting nerve root, and you've got the vertebral body in between. So if you aim your needle to be in this space, you're basically in between two neural structures. 
and this is a this is also uh, this space is also devoid of any neural structures but your your needle will be in between two neural structures the exiting nerve root as well as the traversing nerve root so th this is something important cambil cambil triangle so this this uh, diagram again demonstrates the uh, subpedicular approach and the cambil triangle approach so this area between the exiting nerve root and the traversing nerve root is the cambil triangle and uh, for l5 so if you inject in the in this region your your um, your uh, uh, local anesthetic agent will be able to uh, uh, will be able to affect the l5 as well as the l4 nerve root and if you are doing a subpedicular approach for the l5 nerve root so then uh, you have to inject your local anesthetic agent at this the this region which is possibly the safety triangle the triangle between the nerve root that, uh, and the lateral border of the vertebral body sorry i'm very sorry the lateral border of the vertebral body and the inferior part of the pedicle so this this is basically the safety triangle region this is the cambil triangle region so these two uh, anatomical landmarks if you can identify in the x ray in the fluoroscopy and if you get your c arm aligned very well so that you can see all these landmarks then you have all you have to do is just you put uh, just put your needle in in the desired space right so the, here is a picture of the cambil triangle block and not going into details uh, so let's come to lumbar facet joints in Uh, lumbar facet joints um, so like again uh, we have to uh, uh, like most of us prefer an oblique view to uh, to get the lumbar facet joints so what what we are aiming at in this in this kind of a thing is we are aiming for we are aiming for the the medial branch of the dorsal lute ganglion so uh, the, uh, or uh, there are some people also do an intraarticular injection of the lumbar facet joints so you either you are uh, you are uh, aiming for the medial branch or you are aiming for the intraarticular injection whatever it is the idea is to uh, see identify the landmarks in the x ray get your cms aligned well so that you can you can see the joint well uh, you can see identify the structures you can see um, the your scotty dog well again uh, so let us see what uh, let us see this this picture suppose we are aiming for uh, the l3 l4 facet joint which is supplied by the l3 uh, uh, medial branch of the l3 dorsal lute ganglion so if you see here the the l3 uh, dorsal lute ganglion is is exiting here and the medial branch is is going uh, down here so if you are targeting this medial branch so your needle position will be has will have to be over this green dot this is your position for the uh, for the uh, for targeting the medial branch and if and further if you are doing a rhizolysis you can uh, you can aim for rhizolysis of this this region and also the 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 facet joint will be medial to it so um let us see again for the scotty dog where uh, the scotty this is again a view of the scotty dog uh, and uh, uh, so your if you are aiming for the this is a facet joint can be very well seen you can target the facet joint for an intraarticular intraarticular injection or if you are aiming for the medial branch of the dorsal root ganglion what you have to do is you have to target this area which is the junction between the ear and the uh, nose of the uh scotty dog so it is just about the eye of the scotty dog this region will be your target so you have to get a very good view of this region and target your needle accordingly so for l1 to l4 medial branches the target needle in the destination is the junction of the superior articular process and the transverse process where the target uh, nerve crosses the midway between the superior border of the transverse process and the mabillary accessory ligament notch so this uh, ml notch has been um, emphasized in many of the literature but it's very difficult to uh, clinically identify it or go for it so the uh, so the like the clinical tip is to identify the uh, the uh, ear as well as the nose of the scotty dog and go for that region or identify the pedicle and go superiorly so this is often described as the superior to the eye of the scotty dog so uh, and uh, the for the l5 dorsal ramus the target point is located in the middle of the base of the superior artery the process and therefore slightly below the sacral ilia and if the ilia crest interferes with the placement of the needle at l5 dorsal ramus you have to oblique the fluoroscope 5 to 10 degrees back towards the anterior posterior to visualize a non obstructed trajectory to the junction of the superior articular process and the sacral ilia so you have to for for the l for uh, blocking the l5 uh, dorsal uh, medial branch you have to uh, move your uh, if you are targeting by the l5 s1 joint you have to move your uh, fluoroscope uh, like your c arm accordingly to go for that region so again this is a uh, the here the what the operators have done is they have targeted the uh, in uh, the joint they've gone inside the joint and put in a intraarticular injection some people use this uh, this this also um let's come to the sacroiliac joint uh, basically this uh, the sacroiliac joint the anatomy it is curved 
the posterior aspect of the joint is located medially compared to the anterior part so this is this gives a very complex structure to the joint when you're trying to inject it so you cannot uh, so for uh, for uh, practical purposes only for uh, injecting we have to target the lower part of the joint we have to uh, we have to uh, target the lower part uh, since we are uh, we are uh, trying to gain access to the joint from the posterior side from the back we have to, uh, we, uh, we have to target the lower part of the joint and uh, where uh, and we have to angle cephalod also because by doing that we can see the posterior part of the caudal end separately from the rest so we have to uh, target the lower part of the joint we have to angle cephalod and um, we have the starting point on on the skin would be a bit uh, below where um, uh, where the the lower part of the joint ends and you have to angle your beams uh, cephalid in direction so that you can go um, in the cephalid direction with your needle as well so this, this is the region where we uh, where, where sorry this is the region where you have to target the lower part of the joint the, the beam should be directed in the cephalid direction you can see the lower part of the joint very well and uh, from the posterior part since it opens up and uh, this is uh, how the joint has been breached and when you go in you, you put in some you put in a uh, put in dyes and uh, put your local anesthetic agent um, so for sacrococcygeal joint is something which i i mean i haven't used in my clinical practice or haven't seen but uh, this is something which i uh, try to find out what uh, like uh, sacrococcygeal joint injections are Sacrococcygeal joint is a fibrocartilaginous joint between sacrum and coccyx. It is supported by anterior posterior sacrococcygeal ligament, which is uh, which are very tough ligaments. And between the coccyx one and two segment, there um, is often a, a vestigial disc, uh, which can be a source of post-traumatic hypermobility. Uh, so this is uh, so what what the injection uh, what the techniques have been described is you know, we put the patient prone on a table, uh, get the uh legs abducted so that you can uh, so that the gluteal muscles get out of the way and you get a clearer picture with your cm with a view you can uh, you can see the, the sacrococcygeal uh, disc space and you can uh, and again with the lateral view uh, you can uh, with, with an apn lateral view you can uh, you can target your um, you can um, localize your target and go in with a needle and put your injections uh, but some people do it with ultrasound guidance also which which i think is more popular than uh, x ray guidance So I put in a picture of uh, the sacrococcygeal joint with how it looks in the ultrasound, although it's not included in this topic. Mm, and uh, some people do this ganglion impart block. I don't have any personal experience with this, so the ganglion impart can also be uh, targeted uh, using a fluoroscope, and uh, this helps in coccydynia, coccydynia pain, um, uh, according to many literatures. Um, thank you for your patient hearing. I'm open. For